Hey everyone, welcome. Hi, welcome again. Uh, my name is Shalini Joshi Amdagni, and welcome to this week's Thursday Facebook Live. Uh, if you are here brand new, uh, my name is Shalini Joshi Amdagni, and I'm an international physical and emotional pain relief expert. And I help people who are feeling stuck in pain feel relief quickly so that they can get on with their lives feeling peace and clarity. And I do uh, these live sessions every Thursday uh, to share tips and tools and strategies to help you move past uh, the physical pain, emotional pain, and feel, you know, break free from that pain so that you can create the magical pain-free life that you want and deserve. And so uh, welcome. If you are watching this uh, live, uh, come and say hello. And if you are watching the, this on replay, do say hello, say hello anyway. And uh, if you are watching this on my YouTube channel, then welcome to you as well. And for those of you who are unaware, I do have a YouTube channel. It is um, somewhere here. here. EFT with Shalini. So if you go to EFT with Shalini uh, and subscribe, then you will get every single video that I do every week. And so if you miss out, then, you know, it'll still be there and you'll be uh, informed. So this week's uh, topic is decoding messages from your body and helping your body heal. So, um, you know, um, let's, uh, before I get into that, let's, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about, uh, let, wait, let me get back to that. Let me tell you what I'm going to share with you uh, before. So we're going to talk about, uh, as I said above, the, the complex chain reaction that actually happens before you have aches and pains and some sort of illness or disease. And then I'm going to be sharing with you uh, the messages from your body from the different parts. So uh, if something's happening in your throat, it's a different message than what's going on in your knees. Uh, is, uh, you know, and it, that's different from what's going on in your feet and so on and so forth. So I'm going to be sharing with you some basic, um, some basic uh, typical messages that you can begin to you know decipher so that you better understand your body and then we are also going to look at i'm going to be sharing with you some stories and examples of course and we look at the benefits of why decoding these messages from your uh, body are helpful okay so uh is there anybody here with any kind of physical pain or going through some physical dis-ease, illness, uh, if you would like to share it, you know, um, you can put it down. And, you know, as I go through you, uh, the, the, the different things, I can include that if you want to play along, if you wish. And even if you're watching this on replay, I will be looking at the comments. So if you put your, you know, questions down about maybe thyroid or whatever, then I can get back to you. Okay, so let's think about, you know, uh, generally uh, when we think of illnesses and diseases as a society, most of us have been taught that if we notice something's wrong with the body, like we need to go fix it, right? Let's go fix it. Like I'm helpless and there has to be this person out there that has to fix my body because I'm a helpless victim. And so as soon as you have a recurring cough or cold or aches and pains, the first thing most of us tend to do is that we rush to the hospital or we rush to the clinic, right? And we need the doctor to do something to us to fix this issue, this ache, this disease, this illness, this sickness. And that's the typical way, uh, you know, most people, me included 11 years ago, you know, I, I, that's the first thing like, oh, something went wrong with me. 
now I've got to fix this. And of course, this is not, you know, I'm helpless because this happened to me. This thing happened to me. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I don't have any role in this. And so I have to go and fix it. Right. I went for a holiday. I got a cough. I, I'm a cold and I have fever and I have this and I, I had this uh, vomiting and I had, uh, you know, whatever. And so this thing happened to me and I have to go fix it. So that's where I was coming from at least 11 years ago. And that's where a lot of the people still are operating from. Right. And it's OK. But uh, there is more to the story. Thank you, Michael. Michael says he has a pulled muscle in the right shoulder. Uh, if you can stay tuned, uh, Michael, I will be talking about the shoulders as well. And uh, so uh, if you can stay tuned, wonderful. If not, then you can always come back and, uh, and you know, check. Okay. So uh, yeah, so whether it's pulled shoulders, people have frozen shoulders, uh, you know, and, and, and I'll be, we hold a lot of our stress uh, in our body. But when something happens, we really, uh, most of us tend to go out and seek help, which is fine. But there is more to the story. Okay. So, you know, this is, this is how it kind of plays out. So this is uh, the tip of the iceberg, right? This is the stuff that you can see, the physical stuff. And so you notice uh, that you have a rash, uh, you know, shoulder pain, back pain, or some disease, thyroid, or, you know, whatever, the whole gamut of diseases, diseases, and sicknesses, and physical pain. And so the conventional way is, I have a disease, I have this problem, and I need to fix this symptom. And so the allopathic way of addressing the body is basically addressing the physical, okay? So you get the medicine, you get the, you get the um, whatever pill, you go for the surgery, uh, and, and then, you know, you try to, and you feel better, right? You, you, you definitely feel better. But that is not the whole story okay so what happens is a lot of my clients who've been in pain and had surgeries for whatever reason i have had clients with all kinds of diseases as well you know polycystic ovarian syndrome not ovulating go get a surgery come back it's still the same problem still not ovulating and so a lot of the times people wonder what the heck is going on Right, I'm, I'm trying this, I got this, and uh, I did the surgery, and for a while it was fine, and now it's back. And so the reason that it's back, or the reason that you're going in circles and it's not uh, going anywhere, or maybe it's reduced, but it's still there, is because you didn't address the whole, uh, the whole, uh, you know, the whole uh, issue because it's not what's showing up as this tip of the iceberg. There's a lot going on underneath that we tend to overlook because we don't see it. And we are not taught as kids to see beyond our symptoms. You have a child, he's got a cold, take this medicine, take this syrup, right? I've done that for many years, at least for five years of my kid's life. And you know they're 17 and 16 now, and we don't do medicines at all. It's not that. It's not that. I'm not advising you not to take the medicine, but I'm, you know, saying that you've got to go beyond the physical and look at what's going on. So typically, what happens, right, is that uh, what happens is you have you have uh, you experience an event. Okay, you experience an event, whether it's in your childhood or something, you know, uh, uh, it can be a physical event, like you fell, or you have an emotional experience, uh, something happened. And so that event in itself is not a problem, but you have a perception, you know, you give meaning to that event. And because of that, you know, you have an emotional reaction 
to that event, right? And then you have some perceptions about that event and that stuff that goes on in here, right? Also creates an impact on your physical being. You know that time when you know you you have to get up on stage and you're the next speaker and then you get butterflies in your stomach but that's becoming because you know technically your thoughts say oops i'm next and then you have an emotional reaction right and it's like worry and fear which shows up as a physical symptom or your 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 you know or you are uh, driving your car and someone cuts you off and you feel really pissed off and then you have this negative chatter what the heck does he think this so it's not you know everything is interlinked and so what's going on inside will affect you physically and so when the physical symptom shows up there's been a chain reaction that's been going on before the symptom shows up okay and of course you know what's going on with you mentally emotionally will create some sort of physical impact sooner or later and even if you don't have the physical symptom and and, and you've got stuff going on here where you're upset and you've got stresses you know the, the when you look up the data 90% of all diseases, 85 to 90% of all diseases are stress related. It's what's below the surface, right? What you don't see is creating, creating the diseases. But oftentimes we overlook this. You know, there, there are also times when, uh, there are also times when you're doing something physical and it'll affect you mentally. You exercise, right? My husband loves to exercise. He's, a, he's an exercise freak. And you know, when he, he exercises, does this physical thing, he feels so great and his mental, his attitude towards uh, you know, the day is different, right? So you can, and then physical stuff can affect you uh, negatively uh, as well, right? So it's, it's, it's all intertwined and that's why when you have a symptom, whether it's an illness or a disease or whatever, you are just, and if you're just going to address the symptom, which is the, 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 whatever the symptom is, right? If you have a headache or you've got an ache and pain of like Michael, there's a pulled muscle in the shoulder or whatever, then uh, just addressing it in the Western way, the allopathic way is okay but you haven't addressed the root, the cause of it, because it's, you know, what's going on mentally, emotionally before, that's at the root of what's going on. And that's why if you learn to pay attention to your body, to the messages from your body and try to understand it, you know, you have a relationship with everything in your life. You have a relationship with your job. You have a relationship with your spouse. You have a relationship with your children. You have a relationship with your boss. And you have a relationship with your body. It's just how great is your relationship with your body on a scale of zero to 10? 10 is I really have a great relationship. I understand it, its messages. I take care of it. I take care of what I put in my body. I take care to, you know, filter the the negative thoughts out and, and, and you know, uh, keep my body and my mind in a positive frame of mind. So everybody has a relationship. You have a relationship with money. It's the same thing. It's not what's, what's going on physically with the money. I only have this much in the bank, but it's what's going on emotionally. So you have a relationship with your body and it's, it's really up to you to be more kind and compassionate and understanding of what the body is trying to tell you instead of just popping it with the with the pills and the medications and the surgeries and you know i truly believe that allopathic uh, way of treating is is huge it's so important like you have a 
fracture, you need it. You, you, you've got, you know, these medicines can help you temporarily fix the problem instantly, right? But if you also included what's going on underneath, then you can have lasting relief. Then you can really heal your body. And, you know, healing comes from the, the root word is to make whole. And so that's what happens when you start having a wonderful relationship with your body. There's a book, you know, I, I learned to shift my relationship with my body 11 years ago when I was in pain and I had a disease and I was in so much pain that I had been confined to quit my job and I was confined to bed rest indefinitely because the doctors just ran out of things that they could do with me to help me and they said surgery but you know we 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 don't know if anything's going to change and then i heard these amazing words that i had never heard in my life before at a seminar that you create your reality you create your disease with your thoughts and you know uh, uh, it was it was shocking to me that i could possibly be so powerful to create this big mess inside of me but that's when i became aware and more attentive and more you know uh understanding of what was my body trying to tell me and one of the first books that came into my life was you can heal your life by uh, louise hay and it changed everything right everything and it's been an 11 year journey uh, my family and I, we don't do medicines because, you know, we address what's going on underneath. And when you address that, then you're healing it from the roots and everything returns to its normal state of flow. And you, you know, you, you stay uh, healthy and, uh, you know, everything is working in your body because your body is divine intelligence. You, know, you didn't create your body. It was created by div the divine and you don't know what's going on with your body. Like, how is my liver functioning? How the heck do you know anything, right? How does the baby born? You have nothing to do with it. But it's when we mess up, then the body's functioning becomes, uh, you know, uh, there's dis-ease inside. And that creates a whole lot of messes emotionally, mentally, and physically. So, you know, that is, so there's a chain reaction that leads up to what's going on with you physically today. Okay. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Michael. Yes, uh, you can heal your life. It's by Louise Hay. So, what you know? What are the? How can I begin to decode the messages that I get from my body? Okay. And uh, first of all, I, you know, there are lots of books out there that give you the emotional root causes of your diseases, of your illnesses, of your aches and pains, starting from your head, every little angle, every little um, organ in your body, you know, they have uh, an explanation and an underlying cause. And one of the books is, as Michael has put it here, thank you, Michael, you can heal your life. There is another wonderful book called The Secret Language of Your Body by Ina Segal. There is uh, Your Body Speaks Your Mind by, I think it's Dr. It's Deb, Deb Shapiro, I've forgotten. And of course, there's lots of books on chakras, right? Um, to balance your chakras. And what, what you're doing is basically understanding your body so that you can heal it. And so <clears throat> I'm gonna go through with you um, some here there so you know when i started my journey uh, i attended this seminar and i attended a workshop of, of, on chakra healing and uh, understanding that you know every part of your body is an energy center and each one has a different meaning so i'm gonna you know there's if you get these books you'll get so much from them i can't get into a lot of details here but here is what I'm going to do. So we're going to start with your body at, from, from the bottom, right? So 
the first thing is your feet, okay? And if you think about the functions of your feet is to carry you forward, right? You move forward. If you didn't have feet, how do you move forward? You don't, you know, you're stuck. So your feet carry you forward. And I can go into like so many stories about this, but if you have issues with your feet, numbness or, you know, all kinds of aches and pains with your feet, right? That means, you know, you have to ask yourself, like, why does moving forward feel painful? What has been going on in your life that moving forward feels painful? Because moving forward is what the feet help you do, okay? Ankles, I'm rushing through it because, you know, there's like I, I, can't, I possibly can't, I'll have stories for every one of them uh, with 10, 11 years of experiences with clients, but you know, there's not enough time and I realize I've been going overboard like one hour. So I'm gonna uh, cut and, in, and you can definitely refer to these books. So your, your ankles, if you think of your ankles when you stand, right? If you, were, if you just stood up right now, the weight of your body is, you know, the ankles hold the weight of your body, right? So it's about like the weight, holding on to the weight. And also, if, if you were standing up right now and you had to turn and go left or go left, right or go forward or go backward, right? So it's about directions. They help you, your ankles, even your wrist, right? It helps you shift direction. So anytime you have things going on with your ankles, like your ankles feel achy and painful. It's like, what are the emo What is the emotional weight? Where am I being feeling? Where am I feeling chained? Like there's these chains of pains that are that are holding me back, right? Or it could also be with direction when you feel confused, when you lack clarity about which way do I go? I'm stuck. I'm feeling stuck. I don't know which way to go. So that's that. That also has to do with the ankles and so next time you have an ankle pain you know try to think back about what's going on in my life because your life is where's that where's that thing gone it's, it's not just about what's going on physically with you it's all this all this stuff life is happening you have relationships you have issues at your job and your and, and your spouse and your money and and all kinds of things right so this is really important in what's going on. And that's why when you have, for example, ankle pain, you want to think about what's weighing me down. What issues are weighing me down? Where do I feel chained? Or where am I lacking clarity? Uh, am I feeling confused? Do I feel directionless? Knees, right? And logically, when you think of your knees, what do they help you do? If you didn't have knees, would it be possible to sit, right? Would it be possible to bend and pick up a pencil? It would, but it would be really hard. So the knees in my, in my you know, they, they, they talk about knees have to do with flexibility. If you didn't have the flexibility, it would be really stiff. Imagine like straight legs and trying to reach uh, down to pick up something, right? So knees represent flexibility and they also help you change right you can stand you can sit you can bend you can do lots of different things so it's also about changes and so when you have knee issues right you want to think about what are the changes that are going on in my life that are hard to accept where am i being inflexible in my views in my opinions in my thoughts about what's going on around me it could be in relationships it could be a job like you know the the your company is being taken over by a big company and now you're really finding it hard to like adjust to it and you don't want to you, you know you feel stuck in the past so bending with the changes in your life okay being flexible and not holding on tightly to the way things used to be moving on back so when you think of your back, right, your back 
when you think of your back, I think of my spinal cord, right, right from the lower back. And the spine's job, you know, when you say spineless, right, it's like, you know, he's so spineless, she's spineless. You think of, uh, like, there's no spine, you think, you know, imagine what would happen to your body if you didn't have your spine. So the spine helps you uh, have the support and give you the structure, right? To, to support your back. And so when you have back pain, it's about not feeling supported by life, not feeling like you have support. Now, lower back has a different meaning than middle back, which has a different meaning than upper back, okay? So lower back, uh, you know, getting into chakras, or maybe I shouldn't even go there, but root chakra, lower back, has the, the issues have to do with money they have to do with family financial support family support or you know um religion or whatever your your faith is that has to do with your lower back and um your middle back is about control and not feeling in control and you know just like you can't, you can't, uh, it's, it's, you know, when you try to access the back, it's hard to access, like what's going on here? Like, I don't have any control over what's going on, right? So not feeling like you have, uh, you have uh, charge of your life. And the upper back is about, it's where your heart chakra is, right? So the heart chakra is all about love and emotions and feelings. And so the back uh, is about, emotional lacking in emotional support if you have upper back pain right or feeling like hey i i give so much and i don't get um the support that i'm looking for when i need it there's nobody to support me i'm not feeling emotionally supported by my by by whatever you know whoever's the significant people in your life so the upper back has to do with emotional support but back in general has to do with support not feeling supported in life if you've got back problems and that's like so many people have back problems right and you go for the surgeries and you go for the thing and it fixes uh, you know part of it but the, the 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 other thing with allopathic medicine is you know yes go for it but if you don't address these deeper issues that are at the cause then it just creates more complications because you've got the surgery you've doused all those medicines right and eventually it's gonna create more havoc um, in your system, right? And so you really want to address what's going on with me. So you want to pay attention to what's going on in my life, where am I not feeling supported, and all the feelings that you're holding on to these bottled emotions, right? They are creating a lot of dis-ease. So as you clear this stuff, right, as you release and let go of all these feelings that I'm not supported or me uh, and, and all of that, as you start to clear it, then you feel better and better and, you know, you have less uh, aches and pains in your back. Trust me, because I was on bed rest. I had a rib belt, I had a neck support, and I couldn't turn my neck like this. I couldn't drive, I couldn't take my kids to school. I've been there. And so I'm speaking from experience, okay? Talking about your hands, right? When you have issues with your hands. Now think about hands. Like what, what do the hands uh, symbolically help you do? They help you to hold on, right? And they help you to handle different things. So when you have issues with your hands, it's about, you know, am I holding on tightly to something and not wanting to let go, or I do I have too many things to handle? Like I have to handle this and I have to handle that and I have to handle so many things in my life. And, and so that is what's going on with hands, right? Uh, that's what you wanna think about when you think about issues that are going on with your hands. The fingers represent the details in, in, in your life, what's going on, the little details. And I'm not getting into that because it's far too detailed, but coming along to the elbow and again elbows you know they 
you know, you can see if I didn't have my, my elbow, then I wouldn't be able to bend, right? And I wouldn't be able to reach out and, and do different things, right? So changes, move, uh, flexibility, all that is, is, again, change, direction, flexibility. That's what the message of the elbow is. So where in my life am I being stiff? Am I not being able to, to, to be flexible? Uh, actually, a lot of joint issues have to do with that too, right? Your joints, you, you, when you don't feel flexible, when you're not going with the changes, then you'll have joint problems. So it's not just knees and elbows. Let's just say it's all joints. I should have written that too. So I hope, uh, let me know if you're getting this. Let me know. Give me a thumbs up if you're understanding what I'm saying. Or this just doesn't make any sense to you. <laughs> um, are you relating to this? Okay. And um, if you have any ahas, like, oh, you know, I can relate to this because I have a knee issue. And, you know, uh, if, if you something comes up for you, please do share it. So moving along, moving along, going to the neck. Okay, neck, again, it's like a joint, right? And it's about flexibility. Uh, you know, you hear the thing, this person is a pain in my neck, right? Uh, or you have a stiff neck. And stiff neck is not about that you slept on the wrong side of the pillow and you, you wake up and now you have a stiff neck. Because neck is part of your throat and throat is part of communication. And uh, stiff neck is about where in my communication and uh, am I not being flexible am i being stiff am i being opinionated it's only my way or the highway and not being able to look at others points of view because you know i can see a whole different view when my neck is flexible but if i have a stiff neck i can only see limited you know uh view and it's literally like that Okay, so you're, when you have a stiff neck, your body is lis uh, letting you know what you are doing, feeling, thinking, and, and there's a problem because you're not being flexible enough. You need to be open-minded. You need to have a, an open communication, okay? So that's the neck. I, any issues with the eye uh, have to do with what are you seeing in your world that you don't like, that's not happy, that's not pleasing. You know, what's going on in your life that you don't want to see? Like, I wish I didn't see this, or it's so sad to see this. I had a woman who had come many, many, many years ago, and her eyes were getting smaller and smaller and smaller till she could hardly open her eyes, and she had been to all the doctors, and like they couldn't figure out what was going on. And when you went back to, you know, what was happening in her life, uh, her husband had died and her only, uh, she had two daughters and one of her daughter was doing drugs. And she had a constant, she was constantly fighting with her mother, this lady who was, you know, who came to visit me and she was doing drugs and she had lots of issues with her daughter and so not liking what i'm seeing in my everyday life i remember when i uh got my eye issues i would you know when i had uh, this eye wear contact lenses you know and uh i remember the time when i was 15 and i came i had to move schools and there was a lot of stress in my life uh, at that time and I was not liking what I was seeing. And all through my childhood, I had perfect eyes. And then suddenly something happened. And I'm not going to go into that story. But it's what are you seeing in your world that is not fun, that makes you unhappy. Again, listening, ear, is about the ability to listen, right? And when you have ear issues, no matter what the ear issue is, technically, it's really about... Um, what am I listening to that feels painful? I've had so many clients with tinnitus, like they have this ringing in the ear, nonstop ringing. And, 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 and you know, the, the, the thing is that, that there've been so many issues that have been going on in those people's lives, right from childhood. There's a lot of 
noise in the family. There's a lot of noise and conflict, right? And it's painful to listen to it. And so you've got this ear ache, like my ear hurts now because of all the noises that I've been listening to. So what are you listening to? What's going on that you've been listening to? Uh, you know, what's uh, like, there's, there was this kid who had constant earaches and his parents were always telling him all the things that were not right with him and this is not the way and blah, blah, blah. And there was this nonstop uh, accusations and criticism and his ear, he had ear aches. Okay, not getting into the stories. Nose has to do with your self worth. You you know, people say, oh, she's got her nose up in the air, right? So if you have a runny nose, right? Runny nose. Runny nose is really about an inner crying for help. Notice that. Notice when you have a runny nose, are you feeling overwhelmed? Like there's so many things to do. I wish I had help. I know because I go through this uh, many times. And it's, it's like an inner crying for help, right? It, it's like you want help. I wish I had help, but I have to do this all alone. So, uh, if you have a stuffy nose, it's like a blocked sense of self-worth. You're not feeling good about yourself. You're not feeling that you can breathe in peace. And, and you know, you, it's, it's all about your self-worth, how you see yourself. Or maybe others have said things and now you don't feel good about yourself. So stuffy nose, runny nose, that's, that's what it's all about. Jaw is about communication, right? And you use your jaw to communicate. <laughs> so my jaw is moving. But, you know, a lot of the times I've had people with transmandibular joint problems. Technically, I don't even know what that means. But I do know that... Sometimes when you're angry and when you're pissed off and you know you have a lot of this anger and stuff going on and you cannot express it, express it, it gets locked into your jaw, locked jaw. I think that's even a, even a disease, right? So, so it's all the anger, you know, when you grit your teeth like that or, you know, it's all about storing emotions in your jaw. I have another story about it. I remember many, many years ago, I don't know how we're doing with time. There we go, we're already 40 minutes into this. Uh, maybe I'll skip the story, okay? Uh, so face is about, you know, how are you facing your situations? What's going on and how are you facing the situations, uh, right? So what are you seeing? What are you hearing? What are you thinking? How are you facing situations in your life? And if it's, you know, your face can tell uh, a story. So if your energy is really, you know, you, it's really drained and it's, it's really sucked up. It's like there's so much you've been facing and it's been really, really hard uh, on you. And your face tells that story. Okay. Head is of, of course about you know all the thoughts that we're thinking and analyzing and so when you have headaches it's like what is going on in your life that's giving you a headache or who is giving you a headache or what situation is giving you these headaches or whatever is going on uh, you know the diseases with your head okay shoulder there you go Michael so shoulder is about shoulder you know where do you carry your bag, you carry your bag on your shoulders. And shoulders are about shouldering responsibilities. So I, I have to go back up um, and, and see Michael was talking about a pulled, uh, pulled muscle in the right shoulder. And you know, where do you usually carry your, your backpack or your knapsack is your right shoulders. And it's all about the responsibilities from the past all the stuff that you're carrying with you, your backpack, and uh, not, the, not the real backpack, but the emotional backpack. So what are you carrying with you? What is this weight of responsibility on you that's weighing you down, that's creating this pulled tension? Our muscles, our joints, our, our ligaments, you know, are the first uh, things that get impacted when we hold on to stress, you feel yourself tensing up, right? And shoulders is about 
responsibility and left uh, shoulder is also both it's it's responsibilities about the future the weight of responsibility about the future I had a, a woman with frozen shoulders and there was a lot of responsibility about a sick mother and she had to keep tending to her mother and there was this whole uh, she had numbed you know kind of numbing the pain so moving on I hope that is uh, gives you like you want to go back Michael and think about what are the risks what where am I feeling the weight of responsibilities right what is what if what is weighing me down what responsibilities are just weighing me down okay so that's the shoulder and I mean that's I think that's basically what I had for you for from 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 your foot down all the way till your head and you know there are so many experiences uh, that I can share with you, but we are limited in time and I had thought about sharing more details, but I hope you know sharing this has uh, allowed you to understand that Your body is not just you know When you have something show up in your body when you have a disease, it's not just what's going on don't just focus on uh, seeing it from one aspect, one dimension, you have the physical and then the emotional dimension and the mental dimension, right? So you want to not overlook what's going on in here if you want uh, to heal your body and, and really address the root issues as well. Uh, I, I'm just thinking of a movie that, uh, you know, uh, Woody Allen, what was, what was, it, what was it called? Um, not sure, but in that he, the, 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 the woman character says, why aren't you angry, right? He says, I don't get angry, I just grow a tumor. Not sure what the Woody Allen movie was, but I thought that was so fascinating. I don't get angry, I just grow a tumor. So when you are growing a tumor, right, you want to go back and say, what is going on with me emotionally? What am I holding on to? And so it's really important to have communication with your body to respect your body's messages it's trying to tell you something about you that is not working that is off balance that needs attending right and the more the benefits are that you can then begin paying attention to it and when you pay attention to it you can start to dis decipher and decode what it's trying to tell you and when you can do that then you can begin to release all the old bottled emotional uh, mental uh, weight and aches and pains that you're carrying with you and return to a place of more peace in your body because when you have more peace in your body that means a lack of dis-ease in your body which means that the body can return to its normal state of well-being, its normal state of flow, and everything works better. So uh, thank you for joining, and uh, I hope you got something out of this. I hope you, the next time you have any aches and pains, you don't, you begin to, you know, acknowledge that this is a message, and I need, uh, instead of just, you know, please go ahead and fix the symptom, but also, you know, pay attention and, and begin this journey to develop a more intimate relationship and respect your body and, and you know, pay attention to your body so that you can have a, a wonderful, a healthy, happy uh, life and, and have a wonderful, vibrant, energetic uh, body as well. So thank you for joining me. If you have any questions, feel free to post them below. I'll see you again next week in a different, uh, with a different topic. And don't forget that, you know, if you want to uh, keep getting these videos, I have a YouTube channel where all this video goes, you know, I upload it to the YouTube channel. So, and there's lots more there than just what I do here. So uh, if you, if you subscribe to the YouTube video, EFT with Jalani, you will not miss a single, um, a single episode or uh, uh, you know whatever I share so thank you again and I'll see you next week guys thank you bye bye